I heard about Shenyang, but Deep Speech definitely haven't heard about Shenyang. Hello and welcome to my channel, Hardware AI. Last few videos on my channel were about TinyML with wire terminal, a Cortex M4F based development board with an LCD screen and a sturdy plastic case. Seed Studio, the company that made wire terminal, decided to take this idea a step further and recently announced Re Terminal a Raspberry Pi 4 compute module based development board with a screen in a sturdy plastic case. I got my hands on one of these three terminals and going to make a brief box opening, run a few demos and explain possible use cases for the device. Even if you don't plan on buying a re-terminal, you will find useful information that can be applied to regular Raspberry Pi 4, be it the board or compute module, particularly in the interface machine learning inference demo section of this video. An important disclaimer, I now officially work in Seed Studio. However, I will make this video as impartial as I can, since video making and publishing is not part of my work duties. I'm just a humble application engineer. ReTerminal is powered by Raspberry Pi 4 Compute Module 4 CM4 with quad-core Cortex-A72 CPU running at 1.5 GHz. CM4 module version used for re-terminal has 4 GB of RAM and 32 GB of eMMC storage, which shortens boot-up times and gives smoother overall user experience. Peripherals-wise, there is 5-inch IPS capacitive multi-touch screen with resolution 1280 by 720 accelerometer, real-time clock module, buzzer, four buttons, four LEDs, and a light sensor. And for connectivity, the new board has dual-band 2.45 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0, plus gigabit Ethernet port on the side. With the most specs out of the way, we can let re-terminal out of the box, metaphorically speaking. Then inside of the box you will find obviously the re-terminal in packaging and also there are some spare screws you could use for mounting and the screwdriver. Let's unwrap it. Nice, here it is. So what we can see here is that uh, the uh, above mentioned 5 inch uh, IPS touchscreen with resolution uh, 1280 by 720, which is actually pretty great for such small screen. And then we got the four user buttons that can be configured for any function you want. Then uh, these are user LEDs and system LEDs. Um, the first one is power and the second one is the uh, the memory activity, read and write, and these, one, these two can be user controlled. What we see here on the top, there's another button that can be user configured. On the left, we see additional interfaces. These are two USB 3.0, one gigabit Ethernet port, uh, micro HDMI, the same type of HDMI used uh, in Raspberry Pi 4, uh, this one is capable of outputting video in 5K 60 frames per second. Uh, here is USB Type-C power supply, power, uh, power, 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 a USB Type-C for powering up re-terminal. And uh, both here and on the right side, we can see the uh, M4 nuts, mechanical nuts for mounting re-terminal on the surface you want. Uh, here's a radiator thing, uh, and uh, we will see later that just below it, you will be you. There is uh, the compute module. Um, this is a uh, Raspberry Pi compatible 40-pin header, which is compatible with all the standard Raspberry Pi heads that you can find on the market. 
On the back, we can see a proprietary connector that has a high-speed expansion interface with PCIe one-lane host, USB 2.0 port, 28 GPIOs, and PoE. You can use this interface for industrial and more advanced usage scenarios. And there is also camera mount uh, on the bottom and uh, MIPI interface. There is one MIPI interface, but it is hidden uh, behind uh, the back cover. So you'll need to remove back cover to access MIPI to co for connecting MIPI CSI camera. Okay, uh, let's power it up. Ready terminal can be powered by the same power supply used for Raspberry Pi 4, uh, which is 5 volt, 2 amperes. However, in the official description, 4 ampere power supply is recommended, especially when you connect more peripherals, things that already has the screen connected and some sensors inside. Here I have run of the mill, unknown company, yeah, definitely a known company, uh, 5 volt, 2 ampere wall plug power supply. Let's plug it into the outlet and power re terminal. Okay, and we can see that uh, it boots to Raspberry Pi OS. Um, out of the box, it comes with the drivers, drivers pre installed for touchscreen, for light sensor here, and the accelerometer. Um, so, also we have the onboard screen keyboard, which can be launched by pressing on universal access onboard. All right, the keyboard is launched, but uh, in order to see it, it has the auto hide function. Onboard screen keyboard pops up when you need to type the text and it disappears after that. So if I press on this empty space, it will go away and then press again on the terminal, it comes up again. Uh, this was the best uh, on-screen keyboard uh, I was able to find for Raspberry Pi OS, uh, both including the design itself and uh, also this auto height or the show capability. Uh, the touchscreen is quite responsive, but since Raspbian OS is not a mobile operating system, uh, then it, it's not optimized for touchscreens. It might be sometimes troublesome to press on the smaller elements, like for example, I'm trying to press on this cross button and yeah, it took three tries, I made it. Um, so it actually can be better if you use the stylus or digital pen, like um, a regular one, like the one I have here for pressing on the elements. Okay, let me open the terminal and try closing it again. Yeah, so that's that feels more convenient when, you, when, I, when, when, when I use the stylus instead of the finger, but fingers work as well. Yeah, actually, it's a multi-touch, so we can do things like this one. Um, all right, so I already described the onboard keyboard, which comes really helpful if you don't want to connect the actual physical keyboard and mouse. Uh, and then we also have uh, the default Qt demo, which you can launch by pressing two times on this icon on the desktop. and execute. Okay, um, so this is a demo application of something that you will be able to create yourself uh, by, uh, by utilizing Qt or LVGL. Uh, it shows device specifications and parameters. Then if you switch here, it shows the CPU usage, RAM usage, then, 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 and the rest of them. Uh, and then here we see the data from sensors, for example, touchscreen, then there is accelerometer data, and if we press some buttons, we'll be able to see them. Okay, right. Uh, and also there is a light sensor data here above. And uh, here we have a sample dashboard that would uh, be something like you would have in your actual application if you would use it on, for example, smart factory floor or at the warehouse. So here is basically a really simple Qt demo that shows uh, the capabilities that you can make with Qt or other framework and re-terminal. Now, the name of this channel is Hardware AI and not UI Craze. So let's move on to the machine learning demo section. For the first try, we're going to make use of latest feature of Edge Impulse development platform, 
Linux deployment support. We can easily train an object detection model by collecting samples with camera connected to re-terminal, then train in the cloud and automatically download and run the train model with Edge Impulse Linux runner. The backbone model used for transfer learning is MobileNet V2 SSD, and it is quite large. So even with all the optimizations, we get about 2 FPS, so that's uh, roughly 400 milliseconds per inference. The video stream looks quite responsive, but that's because Edge Impulse utilizes frame skipping, meaning inference is not performed on every frame. You can clearly see that if you detect an object and then it disappears from the image, the bounding box stays on for some time. I am sure later Edge Impulse will optimize the uh, inference even further. Also, we'll add some smaller models that will allow to achieve higher FPS. Because Linux support is a very recent feature in Edge Impulse. While we know that Raspberry Pi 4 is not the best board for machine learning inference, since it doesn't have any hardware accelerator for that, we can still achieve higher than real-time inference speed by using a smaller model, making sure, and B, making sure we utilize all four cores and single instruction multiple data instructions, where multiple processing elements in the pipeline perform operations on multiple data points simultaneously, available with Neon Optimization Architecture extension for ARM processors. I trained the simple single-class phase detector on white phase dataset using MobileNet V1 Alpha 0.25 feature extractor with the help of my personal project, Accelerate, a Keras-based framework for AI on the edge. You can train on local computer with NVIDIA GPU or entirely in Google Colab. By specifying TF Lite as converter type, you will receive a TF Lite model that can be run with some adjustments using ARM NN, an optimization toolkit that allows us to utilize full course of compute module and NEON optimization architecture extension. Here's the demo result. The demo won't be included with ReTerminal. But if you follow the steps in the accompanying article, you'll be able to reproduce the result yourself or train the model for different objects. I went a step further and added second stage inference on detected phase, phase key point calculation. This is second stage of phase recognition pipeline, which I will implement and demonstrate in my later video about phase recognition on Raspberry Pi 4. Last, but not least, let's run real-time speech recognition demo with latest version of Mozilla's DeepSpeech. And re-speaker. Hello. Hi. What is your name? My name is Faye. How are you doing? I am doing very well. Today is such a beautiful day. It is. What are you going to do after work? More work! <laughs> so, what are my thoughts about ReTerminal? Machine learning wise, since it is just plain Raspberry Pi 4 with generous amount of RAM, you can run simple computer vision speech recognition models in real time or even faster, provided you optimize the networks well enough. Just don't expect it to be able to juggle four different modal inferences at the same time like NVIDIA Xavier and X. On the other hand, I found it convenient to use as a portable Pi, although using stylus or digital pen for desktop interface is a must. Hopefully, in the future, an official image for Ubuntu Touch will be provided, which will increase the touchscreen usability for user interaction greatly. If you plan to use ReTerminal as OEM controller for smart home, smart factory applications, then you will write your own UI. So that won't be an issue, you won't be using desktop. Presence of touchscreen also makes it possible to mount ReTerminal on a robot for debugging or user interaction. Some people in comments already noted that a battery extension would be great addition. 
there are other extensions planned to be released. What extensions would you like to see available? Share your ideas in the comments below. I'll make sure to pass them on to hardware engineers and product managers.